It is the most important building in America because it's the seat of our democracy. If that building and the people in it don't function, we no longer have democracy. And whatever price we have to pay to protect it, we need to do it. Now it's time for Congress to work the plan. We gave them the plan. We worked hard to give it to them. Now they've got to work to make that plan come through. And that's called a supplemental because the police in the Capitol deserve this. Our nation deserve it. And those families who've lost loved ones deserve it. And we need to up our game in support of the Capitol Police. Truer words. Lieutenant General Russell Honore, he's the head of the Capitol Security Review in the wake of the January 6th attack on what our Capitol Police need and deserve after yet another deadly attack has left them reeling once again. Officer William Evans was killed after a car rammed into a barricade at a Capitol entrance Friday afternoon. The 18-year veteran will lie in honor in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda Tuesday. Family of the fallen Capitol Police officer released a statement today mourning him, quote, Billy was the best father, son, brother, and friend anyone could ever hope for. His death has left a gaping void in our lives that will never be filled. While family was always first, Billy had the open, welcoming personality that led him to make friends with anyone he met. He relished bringing people together and making sure everyone felt included and had a good time. Billy was proud to be a United States Capitol Police officer. His colleagues from the North Barricade were the people he spent so many hours with, and their friendship was one of the best parts of his job. Let's bring into our conversation NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Garrett Hake and Elizabeth Newman, former Assistant Secretary of Counterterrorism and Threat Prevention at the Department of Homeland Security. She is now the director of the Republican Accountability Project. Garrett, I didn't get to talk to you on Friday, but I was on the air when the facts were still becoming clear, Leanne Codwell and Casey Hunt, your colleagues on that beat, were, were with me. And they spoke in really raw and emotional terms about the current state of the Capitol Police. And I wonder if you could tell us how they're doing today. Yeah, I mean, the, the truth of it is they're exhausted. I think the broader Capitol community is exhausted. But these Capitol Police officers going back really prior to January 6th were undermanned. They were working overtime hours, significant overtime hours. In the aftermath of January 6th, they were, you know, incredibly crushed by the death of Officer Sicknick and of the two other officers who took their own lives in the days after that. And then they were pushed even harder just by the nature of being undermanned, having to protect a bigger perimeter, bigger fence line. They were working longer hours. And to have something like this happen, which came out of the clear blue sky on Friday, it seemed, I think was just incredibly demoralizing to everyone in the Capitol Police or the Capitol community, but especially the Capitol Police. It's a struggle for for these officers. Um, and you know, you heard from General Honore there the talk about a supplemental, the idea that more help could be coming in the in the terms of more funding, hiring more officers. That's not something that can be done right away. You can't just flip a switch and get a few hundred more qualified Capitol Police officers up here on the beat. So this is going to be a slog for the men and women of this department. There's just no way around it. Well, and Elizabeth, what Garrett's describing, I, I think, happens in response to crisis about the way forward. And it's, it's, I guess, the legitimate part of the debate. But what Honoré seems to be saying is that they deserve better. And, and these debates don't even start at the facts. Let me show you the new polling about what people believe the facts to be in the deadly insurrection. It's a new Reuters poll. People gathered at the Capitol on January 6th were mostly peaceful, law-abiding Americans. Among Republicans, 51% of Republicans think that. About a domestic attack on the Capitol, that 51% of them were peaceful. The riot at the Capitol was led by violent left-wing protesters trying to make Trump look bad. 55% of Republicans think violent left-wing, left-wing protesters were there. We've had hundreds of arrests. None of them have been identified as violent left-wing protesters. That the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump. A whopping 60% of Republicans think that the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump in a plot that Rudy Giuliani couldn't find. What's her name? Who's being sued by Dominion? Sidney Powell couldn't find. Nobody could find it. Bill Barr. But 60% of Republicans think it was stolen. So we can't begin the process of honoring the Capitol Police or making sure they don't get overrun should this happen again when we can't agree on what the problem is and what the facts are. 
I mean, it's it really is stunning. About the only bright note that I, I take from those um, uh, polls is that the the numbers have actually come down. It was around seventy five percent Republicans yeah. believe the election was stolen. So maybe. We're making a little bit of headway there, but the fact that in the other side of the the poll, you're seeing that they believe that the people on January 6th were peaceful, the people were, um, and that it was the left wing um, insurrectionists, which remarkably the FBI hasn't been able to find, and over 300 arrests and indictments so far. Um, that that's really stunning. I you know they're obviously watching their own form of news, um, and I I just I. I, I continue to be stunned at the lack of facts that are coming from the conservative infotainment sector. Um, and that that is hugely problem problematic. It drives individuals uh, to to some radicalized beliefs um, that are based totally in deception that, you know, if they didn't believe that the election was stolen, if they didn't believe that Antifa was running rampant, they wouldn't feel like they need to pick up arms and be violent in, in what they perceive to be protecting their country. So it's really important. Like, I, I don't know how to say this any other way, we, we got to get some of these Republicans to start, start telling the truth because we're gonna see more violence. Um, it's only a matter of time. And, and I don't know that we can say what happened on Friday is directly connected to this. It's, it's rather um, the, we are seeing a number of incidents of, of individuals with uh, various um, uh, paranoia in, in their backgrounds, uh, maybe some mental health issues. I mean, that we were likely to see post-pandemic anyway, but you add to it this other uh, political violence that is associated with Donald Trump and his big lie. I mean, this is too much for security forces to handle because it's inherently not a security problem. It's an, a, an epistemological problem. That's what President Obama called it back in November. He said, look, this is this is a, a, a problem where we as a society can't discern truth from fiction. How in the world are we expecting law enforcement to solve something that's so much bigger than their security tools can address? It's, it's not fair to put this on them. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.